Okay, thank you very much for that introduction. I will be speaking to you guys today about three powerful tips that will help you become an e-learning champion. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. First, I work for Gem Learning, which is an educational technology company. We develop learning solutions for corporations and non-governmental organizations. We develop custom simulations, custom e-learning courses, mobile learning content, uh, micro learning content. We also develop learning management systems, uh, one of which is uh, one that you are already familiar with, Gem Reactor. And I led the development of that learning management system. For the past decade or so, we've been focused on the corporate learning technology market. And our products are uh, well known to the group here. I would also like to speak to you guys about yourselves. Uh, from the profiles that I got, I noticed that some of you are human resource managers um, and you're interested in finding out how learning technology might be able to help you improve the impact of your training budget. Some of you are OD people, organization development, and you want to develop your own e-learning courses, and that's great. I'm excited to, uh, to talk about that. Uh, some of you are learning and development people, and I understand that you are interested in being able to track the impact of uh, training that is delivered within your organizations, and that's great. There's also a couple of trainers in there. I think I saw one, and I believe you're interested in taking some of your classroom courses to an online format, and that's good. Uh, what I'd like to emphasize here is that in my own career, I have been at some point in all of these roles, and I've had a first-hand chance to experience the challenges that you guys might be experiencing today, and I will speak about some of those challenges today. Why we're here today is because e-learning is taking center stage. Annual expenditure on e-learning products and services is expected to go above $4 billion this year. And every year, we're continuing to see an acceleration in the growth. Organizations are interested in e-learning for various reasons. One primary reason is that the way we're adopting new technologies that make the present skill base obsolete far quicker than it used to in the past. And people need to learn new things all the time. For the organization to stay relevant going forward, they're going to have to make sure their staff gets trained quickly, rapidly, and in a cost-efficient sort of manner. And e-learning plays a very, very critical role in that. The second reason is that even if your organization has never tried learning technology in the past, no learning management system, no e-learning courses, you understand that the use of technology can help you increase the footprint of the same training budget that you get every year by 10 or 15 times because more people get trained, there's better tracking ability. Uh, you're able to understand who is getting trained and what, to what extent, what they understand, what they don't understand. And finally, of course, there's better accountability of the training process itself. So e-learning is critical. And I noticed from the comments that you had in your profiles that some of you feel like you might be getting left behind, that your skills might not be up to date. And I have very good news for you. Your skills are just, just nicely placed for you to take the next step, which is learning about the technology, the instruction design process, and the the best practices related to rolling out e-learning courses. And those are really the three main challenges that I'm going to talk about today. Most people who are interested in e-learning, in deploying e-learning within their organizations or themselves developing e-learning courses, they're overwhelmed by the tech speak. Uh, difficult terms, SCORM, AICC, um, Tin Can, XAPI, uh, actually just learning management system. So these terms are thrown around. People start talking about cloud servers. People start talking about an LMS available in a SaaS basis. And all these terms are new, terms you're not familiar with. So coming to grips with the technology is the first challenge. The second challenge is that folks tend to think that the manner in which training is done in a classroom is the same as the manner in which training is delivered online. And they miss the key difference the absence of the trainer. That means 
the manner in which the course's design has to change. And that difference in instructional design, many people find it overwhelming. They're not able to fully understand what is necessary for them to develop courses that people will go through online and understand them. The third challenge is something that we've observed in pretty much every single organization that we have worked with. The low uptake of courses. And it's a typical story. Um, one of my customers will uh, get really excited about e-learning. They will roll it out and they will expect that the day on which e-learning becomes available to their staff, everyone will jump at it and start taking courses left, right and center. That's not quite what happens. So if you have 100% of the target population that you make the courses available to, you send out an email, most of them will not even pay attention to the email. So about 30% will read the email. 10% will actually click on the link for the LMS. About 5 to 6% will go as far as viewing the course. Uh, usually lesser, but I'm being conservative, so let's go with 5 to 6%. And among the ones who actually start viewing the course, about 2 to 3% will actually complete it. I'm not making these numbers up. 2 to 3% is the average completion rate for online courses. It sounds terrible, but it is true, and there are various reasons for that. Interestingly, this happens to many organizations, but not all organizations. There are some who really are ahead of, ahead of the pack. They've figured out ways to address these challenges. And I'll be sharing some of those tips with you today. So best practices, let's talk about the first one. Checklist for LMS selection. The first thing that you need to understand is that in order for your organization to roll out e-learning, you will need a learning management system. Learning management system, it's a software that runs on the web that makes e-learning accessible to your staff. In that way, it allows you to track who is going through what sort of courses. So that's essentially what an LMS is, a learning management system. And if you go in the market and look for an LMS, you will find that there are many. The difference between the learning management systems, however, is what you're going to have to be careful about. Number one, look for e-learning and classroom training options within the same learning management system. Does the LMS that you're looking at, does it provide both? Uh, if it doesn't, then you need to be careful because you will be tracking your classroom training using maybe Excel sheets or some other software, and you'll be tracking your e-learning and making it accessible through some other software. And it will be a big problem for you to combine the two and you know, figure out how to report on both. So try to find a learning management system that has both in it. The second one, does it involve a major capital expenditure? Do you have to put up a lot of money at the beginning? And maybe your organization doesn't have that kind of budget. And if you don't, then make sure that you find out the upfront investment for the learning management system that you're trying to explore. And you will find that both options are available. Some LMSs insist that you pay a significant amount of money upfront, and then there's a regular periodic uh, maintenance hosting sort of a charge. And certain LMSs just charge the maintenance and hosting and that sort of thing, and they'll do an annual contract or a, or a two-year or three-year or four-year contract. And that, that's how you will get the rate that you like to work with. Uh, the third thing that I want you to pay attention to is the integration of this learning management system with your existing software. Uh, in your organization, you might have a, a, an information system for your people, an HRIS. Uh, you might also have a performance management system possibly built into the HRIS. So if you're getting an LMS, make sure it's easy to integrate this LMS with your existing software. And it should not be very difficult. The way you can measure the difficulty is whoever is selling you the LMS, ask them, how long will it take to create that integration? Um, is it two days or three days? Or is it going to take a week? Is it going to take three months? Because along with that will be a cost item. It could cost you something as little as $500, or it could cost you something as large as $30,000. Make sure you understand how much uh, you're going to be charged for that integration. And the last item that I want you to pay attention to is the reporting module. Because one of the key things, one of the benefits that you will get out of the LMS 
is the reporting ability. You will be able to find out how much training has been completed by how many people, what courses they've taken, what competencies have already been addressed, to what level have they been addressed, what sort of uh, matching you have between competencies and learning needs, for, uh, uh, what sort of um, needs do departments have, and what sort of courses are available so you can match them. You want a learning management system where at the end of the year, the training needs analysis is a click of a button rather than this two month long exercise. So look for these four things in your learning management system and you should be well set. The second best practice that I want to talk about today relates to instructional design, the way courses are designed. And it's ideal that you have courses designed within your company. Majority of the courses that your organization wants to deliver to your staff, your own people can develop them. But ask yourself, in the absence of an instructor, what questions will people have? So start with the questions. In this topic that I want to teach, by the end of the course, what questions do I want answered? What do I want people to know by the time the course is ended? So you make a list of those questions. The answers to those questions, once you put them down, will be your course content to be delivered online. And you can put it in a sequence that's intelligible, understandable, and you have your online course. So instructional design, start with the questions. And the third tip is regarding engagement. I mentioned that most people are not too excited about training, taking a training program online, which is understandable, right? If they, if they compare a training program conducted in class with a training program that's conducted online, definitely the one in class is richer. There's a person-to-person -person contact. They possibly get a day off, uh, off-site to go through this training program and you're you're giving them this online option you sit for an hour in front of a computer and we expect you to know all of this stuff so obviously there will be this resistance whether it's conscious or, or subconscious and there will be this lethargy and, and people will not really want to do it so how do you address that well one tip I can share with you is gamification gamification is not about turning your course into a game it's about taking your course and adding game elements to it. For example, we once put together a course for an organization that was on, I think it was a code of conduct or company values or something like that. The most boring topic you can imagine. And we just added game elements to it. Points, you know, related to quizzes, quiz questions, completing activities. And at the end, all the points would be added up and they would be displayed on a, a leaderboard. And people were going through the course three or four times just to make sure their name showed up on the leaderboard. There were people who were taking snapshots of the screen and, and you know, with their name on the leaderboard and sharing it on Facebook. It, it, it turned into this, this bonanza of learning and we weren't expecting it, but we, we learned a best practice that I want you to pay attention to. So quick recap in terms of best practices, pick an LMS that will help you solve your problems rather than increase them for you. Number two, in terms of designing courses for online learning, start with the questions. And number three, in terms of engagement, try to add game elements, points, levels, badges, leaderboards to your course. Right before I, I start with the questions, I want you to know that if you want to learn more, we have an upcoming course, upcoming session of Amplified Learning which is Gem Learning's branded e-learning design course. It's a two-week certification. Most of it is conducted online, uh, but there is a mandatory uh, single-day interaction with the trainers where you will learn how to develop an e-learning course from scratch. You will learn all about the technology, and it is, it is really a, a, a once-a-year sort of thing. Um, so we conduct it in one location once a year, and it's conducted, I think, eight or nine locations in the world. So I strongly encourage you to consider that if you would like to learn more, uh, to click on the link below and uh, then get the details on the course and the date uh, on which it is being conducted in your area and the fee that is associated with that. And if you do sign up, then I might see you there. So all the best with that. And now I'm open to questions. Let's start with the first one.